All right, we are live here at CBDNA, and we are joined uh, by uh, Travis Cross, who is the uh, the very uh, shy and introverted uh, director of bands uh, at uh, UCLA. Travis, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, can you tell us, how long have you been at UCLA? This is my fourth year at UCLA. I've been the wind ensemble conductor there since 2013. And where were you before that? Previous to that, I spent five years at Virginia Tech uh, in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, that was 2008 to 2013. Great. And where did you go to school? Uh, I went to school at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota for my undergrad. And then I uh, was a uh, master's and doctoral student at Northwestern University. Go that Cats. would be the, uh, the Northwestern University uh, basketball team the that is undefeated. Uh, undefeated in NCAA undefeated. tournament history. Ever. Ever. Yeah. One and oh, baby. One and oh. So, and uh, yeah, by the time this airs, which will be tomorrow, I don't think we will have started against the number one seed yet, so we will still be undefeated. So, yeah, not that we're excited or anything. Yeah, yeah. we've all, act it, it was our national championship. We're going yesterday. all the way. We're going to win yeah. this year. <laughs> we just need five more. That's so, right. yeah, one, one game at a time. So, how hard can it be? Yeah, exactly. So, can you talk to us about some of the stuff you've got going on at UCLA? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, we uh, just had a really uh, exciting festival on our campus, uh, Royce Hall, which is a beautiful uh, hall that's on our campus. Yes, it is. Um, but not always the easiest for us to use due to some university bureaucracy. Uh, we were able to do a performance there, invited seven or eight of the best high school bands from around California to join us and a couple of our colleagues from here as clinicians. Great. And that was great fun for us. Uh, and then we're just, we're just now finishing our winter quarter and going to get ready to gear up for the spring quarter, which has some normal musical surprises to be uh, announced. <laughs> and I have to ask, uh, how is Jens Lindemann behaving? Uh, very badly, which is just how we like it. He is the trumpet professor at UCLA, and he's a good friend of mine who I like to uh, like to make fun of. So that's why well, I and I'll say, it you know, we, we did uh, We did a concert in January called Political Overtures. Uh, Slava, American Elegy by Frank Tichelli, Bernstein Mass Quintet Arrangement, uh, Shostakovich Prelude and Shostakovich Test of Overture. And mm -hmm. our faculty uh, soloed with us on the uh, Bernstein. And if you know this arrangement, there's this incredible flugelhorn solo right. in the middle. And if you know Jens, uh, I mean, no one makes that instrument sound as beautiful as he does. And, and so that was a real thrill to, wow. to have him in front of our group. And we'll probably, uh, looking forward to programming, we were part of a commission uh, for uh, Joel Puckett's trumpet concerto. Hmm. So we're looking forward to getting that on the docket here in the next year or so and have a chance to get Jens in front of our group again. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I hate saying nice things about my friends, but well, he's like, he's shockingly talented. Yeah. So, but please don't tell him. I hope no, he's not watching this. So. Uh, he, he, he doesn't know how to operate a computer, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> um, so you had a, a lot of success um, as a, a collegiate band director at a, uh, at a young age in terms of getting a gig and then getting a second gig. What advice would you give to someone who's, say, a master's or a doctoral mm -hmm. student who is looking for a job and how they maybe can, uh, you know, get noticed? Um, my advice is to work really hard and... Uh, that's really about it. I mean, there are other things you can do, and we can talk about that in more detail, about uh, ways to kind of put yourself out there, uh, make yourself available. Um, but, I mean, people may disagree with this in my personal uh, story, but I tend to think that if you're trying to uh, promote yourself, it doesn't really work. Hmm. Uh, so I think that just kind of being available to opportunities, uh, communicating, sharing what you're doing, that's all fine and well, but uh, people would be surprised to know there really isn't a strategy. You just do what you do and, and, and put it out there, and then maybe if people notice or are interested, uh, they'll engage, and then it becomes a really fun sort of conversation. Uh, so, so I think the most important thing, I think there are uh, two or three most important things. Work hard, uh, ask for advice from a lot of people, and trust that advice, even though sometimes it will uh, conflict. Uh, and number three, I think, is to uh, be open to doing as many different things as you can. Uh, I think that when we start to kind of close ourselves off, uh, I'm only going to do this kind of job, right. I'm only going to do it at this kind of school, I'm only going to do it in this place, then things get really difficult. And, and, and uh, this is totally anecdotal, but I feel like the people that say, I want to go teach music, I want to go make music, I want to go be around great people, those people tend to find uh, more success because they're looking in more places. 
Yeah, if your I guess if your ultimate goal is to uh, is to teach a uh, high school band at a place that has a really great tradition of marching band, then that's probably not going to be your first job when you're 23 well, years old. And, and, and we have lots of time. Mm-hmm. I, I th- we, this is a bigger conversation, but I think the growth is about a combination of patience and impatience. If you aren't impatient, you're never going to push yourself to do more and do better. But if you're really impatient all the time, you're either going to have unreasonable expectations for what you're going to get, which might make you... Uh, bitter or resentful when you're not getting things you're not supposed to be getting in the first place anyway. And we all have friends who got major orchestral jobs and they were 22 or 23, and then we start to think that that's normal, and if we don't get that, we're somehow doing a bad job. Right. You know, that's the the first part of that. Uh, But the second part is that, um, you know, we, if you try to push it, sometimes it just takes time. To get better at a thing, sure. to 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 figure out, to live more, to play more, to conduct more, to study more, and and so I think writing the combination of I need to be patient with myself, because this is not something that happens overnight, versus I need to really be so impatient that I get off my butt and do the work. Mm. That's a that's a real struggle. It's a great way to put that. Yeah, my uh, my wife uh, Tiffany, who's a middle school director in Fairfax who I know County, very well. who, who you know very well, um, I've heard her say to uh, student teachers um, and to music ed majors many times that um, that uh, don't ever think that you're better than your first job is because you won't be because you Good. don't even know what you don't know. I'm sure that goes for college, it goes for elementary, it goes for absolutely everything. I mean, none of us really know what we don't know until we don't know it. Right, and a corollary to the last thing I said that connects to this. Uh, on one hand, life is short. We're not promised anything, sure. and, and it could all end tomorrow. But at the same time, we have a lot of time. If you're 25 years old, if you're 30 years old, if you're 30 years old and you become a college band director, you have probably 35 to 40 more years to do that. Right. So, so kind of saying, oh, I'm 35 all of a sudden, I, I'm not where I'm going to retire, that you, know, you have plenty of time uh, and plenty of opportunities and... and uh, yeah, I think the important thing is that you want, uh, it's the attitude thing that Tiffany is talking about. Wherever you are, you have the opportunity to make good music. Wherever you are, you have the opportunity to make mistakes and to learn from them and to grow and to get better. Yeah. And wherever you are, you are going to be around people that you can learn from, uh, that you can honor, that you can trust, that you can uh, become friends with. And, and, and so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a big believer in the dream job and I'm not a big believer in the dream level uh, I think that that your dream is what you make of it and if you do it right uh, wherever you are is your dream job whenever you're there hmm. and you may end up somewhere else and that's okay right. but but if we feel like we're waiting for something else to happen a lot of times I don't think it does happen right. and if we take advantage of every opportunity we have to make real, sincere, honest music, to work hard, and to be a good person around other good people. Wherever we are, we can be happy and successful, and then that could lead to other things. Well, if that doesn't fire you up, I don't know what will. So, rah, rah. Uh, super quickly, can you tell us what it was like to study uh, under Mallory Thompson? Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, I, uh, my first conducting workshop in 1997, I worked with Mallory Thompson. Uh, and I saw that video, actually. It's hilarious. Was uh, that the summer <coughs> thing? Yeah, th- this was actually at the University of Minnesota. Okay. Uh, but she was the guest clinician. And uh, then I'd worked with her many times off and on. And, uh, you know, I just had a wonderful experience there. It was hard. Uh, and that's what it's supposed to be. Right. Uh, and there were uh, times when I was frustrated. I know there were times when she was frustrated. Uh, and that's, again, how you work and grow. But uh, for me, the combination of a really outstanding teacher who herself is both a fine conductor uh, and a fine band director. You know, really, yes. uh, I learned as much from her about how to move, how to study, uh, how to encounter a score as I did, uh, how to get an ensemble to make really good sounds with really great attention to detail. Right. Um, the combination of that, uh, my colleagues in the conducting uh, studio, my colleagues outside of the conducting studio. There were a few people that uh, were in Northwest when I was there who have gone on to get some jobs. Right. Uh, and uh, so to, to, to you know, go to the New York Philharmonic and 
think, you know, a couple of those guys played on my recital. Uh, you know, that's kind of a, a fun thing. And then to watch their success and hear how they play and learn from them, even today, is exciting. Great world-class university and a thrilling city. Oh, that's great. You know, it was just a, a wonderful experience. And uh, I highly recommend picking one up if you have the means. You know, it's a... <laughs> I was in John Painter's final uh, wind ensemble, and I was in Dr. Thompson's first. Uh -huh. So I kind of feel like I hit the lottery. So yeah. and Steve Peterson was uh, was there. So I had all three of them were my college band directors as as an undergrad. And so. some pretty good brass teachers. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, pretty pretty good. So yeah, well, thank you so much, Travis. Yeah, we really appreciate your time, and um, and that's going to do it for us for now.